In this video, we'll be talking about amyotropic lateral sclerosis or ALS. It's a high yield video for USMLE step 1. Stay tuned till the end. Amyotopic lateral sclerosis or ALS is a neurodegenerative disease which is characterized by degeneration of upper and lower motor neurons. Also, there are skeletomuscular defects which lead to weakness and paralysis of the muscles. So this is the lower motor neuron tract. This is the upper motor neuron tract. And in this particular disease, both these neuronal tract can be affected. Let's talk about the prevalence of the disease. Two or three cases per every 100,000 individual is reported in Europe. In this video, we'll be talking about the clinical presentation of ALS, the pathophysiology of ALS, the diagnosis of ALS, and finally, the treatment and management option for this disease. So let's begin with the clinical presentation. So in ALS, the upper motor neuron tract can be degenerating or the lower motor neuron tract can be degenerating. And there are distinct clinical symptoms which can define both of these. In case of upper motor neuron degeneration, spasticity and muscle weakness is pretty much prominent. In case of lower motor neuron degeneration, there is a fasciculation, that means twitching, and muscle cramps and wasting is pretty much common. Let's talk about the clinical manifestations. About 50% of the patients develop cognitive or behavioral impairments in the advanced stage of this disease. About 33%, that means one third of the population, has problems like dysphagia, that means difficulty in swallowing, dysarthria, that means difficulty in speaking. Let's talk about pathophysiology of the ALS. So, in the disease ALS, like many other neurodegenerative disease, different cell types are involved. That includes, obviously, the neuron, then the glial cell types like oligodendrocyte, astrocytes, and microglia. There could be axonopathy, glial dysfunction, and hyperexcitability of these neurons. Let us zoom into one neuron to understand the pathophysiology in bit details. So inside the neuron, there one of the key things that has been noticed in ALS is the apparent RNA metabolism. There are several mutations which are associated with ALS affects this RNA metabolism pathway. Not only RNA metabolism, but the DNA damage repair system is also abrogated in ALS. The mRNAs that are generated in the nucleus are not properly transported outside to the cytoplasm. There is faulty nuclear transport. Now, not only transport, even after the proteins are produced properly, somehow, due to many cases, due to unknown reason, they aggregate together. And overall, the protein degradation or protein quality control mechanism is uh, impaired in this disease. So proteins are not degraded. All these aggregated protein actually affect the mitochondrial biogenesis. It leads to imbalanced energy homeostasis in these neurons. Also, a massive amount of oxidative stress is responsible for the functional impairment of the neuron. Because there are many genes which controls and regulates the uh, oxidative defense against the oxidative stress. So when they are mutated, there would be always a problem uh, in terms of ROS uh, scavenging. There could be other defects like vesicular transport defect, ion channel disba disbalance. All of these are associated with the pathophysiology of ALS. Now, one of the peculiar factor about ALS is the localization of the protein TDP43. It is generally localized in the nucleus and it's good. But somehow, in case of ALS, it's localization is altered. It's mislocalized to all over the cytoplasm. And eventually, this actually aggregates. And that is associated with the degeneration of these neurons. And this is how it really looks like in a 
immunohistochemistry slide, you can see the TDB43 enriched in the nucleus. And in case of ALS patient, it is outside the nucleus forming aggregates like this. The arrows point out. So let's talk about the main genes which are implicated in amyotopic lateral sclerosis. High throughput sequencing has found out many genes which are associated with ALS. Just to name a few, SOD1, which is a regulator of oxidative stress, so this codes for superoxide dismutase, is highly associated and very well studied in context of ALS. Other than that, there are many genes which are mutated and they fall broadly under the category of endosomal trafficking, RNA metabolism and autophagy. Autophagy is a process by which the old proteins and the old uh, organelles are broken down and recycled. So once this kind of recycling is not happening properly, aggregation happens in the cytoplasm and which is one of the underlying pathophysiology of uh, ALS. Let's talk about the diagnosis. Diagnosis of the ALS can be done using MRI. So one of the key signature that is seen in ALS is the bright tongue in a MRI, uh, in a MRI uh, scan. Other than that, there could be degeneration in the corticospinal tract that is also very prominent from MRI reports. Besides corticospinal tract, the basal ganglia, which coordinates movement and uh, motor coordination, that portion is also affected. A study found out that the basal ganglia volume is overall reduced in case of ALS patients. Now let's talk about the CSF-based biomarkers. So there are soluble biomarkers like neurofilament like polypeptide and phosphorylated neurofilament heavy polypeptide. So these are elevated in patients with ALS. But it's not really reliable because this kind of interpretation is variable for different ethnicity patients. So it can be a, a reliable measure for understanding ALS. Let's talk about the staging of ALS. So there are King's clinical staging of ALS, which stage the ALS into pre-symptomatic and stage it as stage zero. Then there is involvement of one clinical region, which is the disease onset time, stage one then involvement of two clinical regions, stage two, substantial respiratory and uh, nutritional failure is stage three, and eventually the stage four is death. For example, in stage zero, there would be very less or mild symptoms, almost pre-symptomatic. And in stage two, there would be paralysis and severe symptoms. Let's talk about the treatment. Obviously, ALS doesn't have any cure or any proper treatment, but supportive medications and supportive therapy can improve the life quality. So the dyspnea and weak cough can be treated with proper supportive treatments like ventilator support, physiotherapy of the chest and mouth, by showing the patient special coughing techniques, etc. The dysphagia can be treated properly with, let's say, speech therapies and consultation with dietitian, teaching the patient proper swallowing and safe swallowing technique, modified diet, and sometimes in extreme cases, insertion of gastronomy tube. Other than that, the pain and numbness associated with um, skeletal muscular system can be treated with physiotherapy, analgesia, and sometimes with other kind of like therapies. Then cognitive dysfunction and dementia can be treated with specific uh, antidepressant therapies and overall uh, other kind of counseling. So I hope this video was useful and informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can get more notes and flashcards in my Facebook and Instagram page. You can support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.